Welcome to Electra Online. One of the greatest mysteries in the universe is that it appears that most of the matter in the universe is not visible. It has to be there, we just can't see it. And not only that, not that we can't see it, it is probably made up of particles that we're not aware of, that we don't know, something that doesn't belong in the periodic table. And yet, it appears to be there, and we know that it must be there, or something must be there, because of the gravitational influence of that matter. Because whenever there's matter, there's gravitational forces, and whatever that matter is, it does appear to affect the gravitational forces. So what observations occurred that tell us that that dark matter, as we now call it, that invisible matter, must actually be there? Well, it turns out that there's a a rule, a relationship between how far objects are away from the center of what they rotate or revolve around. For example, here the nine planets, or I should say eight planets, I didn't put Pluto on there, but here's Mars, I mean Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and they're farther and farther away from the Sun, and because of that, they're moving slower and slower in their orbit. This is normal, and that's because the orbital velocity is proportional to one over the square root of the distance from the object that they're revolving around. And so that's what we expect. We expect the same thing with stars revolving around the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So here's the Milky Way galaxy, a very primitive version of it, of course. And notice that we expect that the stars that are farther and farther away from the center of the galaxy, that they would be moving slower and slower along this curve, the expected velocity curve of the stars orbiting the center of the galaxy. Just like the planets around the sun, we expect to see the same for the stars in the Milky Way galaxy. But instead, we see something that looks more like this. It seems like the farther out we go, the stars really don't move any slower and there's no way that is possible unless there's more mass in the galaxy than we can account for based upon all the stars and the nebulas and everything that we see. So, what is that mass? Where is it? Well, for a while there we thought it could potentially be things that are difficult to see. For example, maybe there are a lot of brown dwarfs, way more than we thought there were. Brown dwarfs are, are stars that never, that never reach nuclear fusion, so they're not very bright, they're very difficult to see, and there may be just an enormous number of them, and we just don't realize they're there. Or maybe there's a lot more black holes than we accounted for, and again, black holes are very difficult to see, because they're black, you can't see them. You can only see the influence of black holes on their surroundings, so maybe there's way more black holes that account for that unseen mass. Maybe there's a lot of white dwarf stars. When they finish their final cycle of existence, they turn into what we call white dwarfs, and they're very tiny, and even though they're white, they're so tiny they're very difficult to see. Or maybe there's a lot of neutron stars out there, stars that have, again, reached their end cycle of their existence, and they're so small they just cannot be seen. But all, of the, all the observations and studies we've done seems to indicate that these are probably not the reason why there's that, all that extra mass that we can't account for. So, we call it dark matter, it must be there. They're exotic, unknown particles. We don't know what they're made out of. We don't know what subatomic particles they're made out of. And it turns out that we estimate that of all the matter that exists, about 85%, which is the vast majority of it, appears to be dark matter with only about 15% of what's left. All the stars and the nebulas and the planets, everything else out there that we can observe, only make up about 15% of the mass that must be there. Again, how do we know it's there? Well, we need it to explain different things such as galaxy formation and galaxy cluster formation can really not have happened the way it did unless there was more matter than we can see. We've done computer simulations, we've done it without the dark matter present, we've done it with the dark matter present, and without the dark matter present, we would not currently have the universe that we have. But if we assume the dark matter is there, all our simulations then indicate that the universe would evolve the way it did. Also, when we study the cosmic microwave background radiation that we receive from all over, again, it shows the fluctuations in that radiation that would indicate that the variation in the density of the universe matches that when we assume that, black, that dark matter was there. 
And also when we study galaxy collisions, the way the galaxies interact when they collide, again, what we see, and if we then assume that dark matter doesn't exist, well, what we see doesn't match up with the assumption dark matter does exist, and it does match up when we assume dark matter exists. So it seems like all the indications from observation seem to tell us that dark matter exists, we just can detect it, we can see it, and it doesn't interact with ENM radiation. So we really have no way of figuring out what it is or detecting it, although that doesn't stop anybody, we're still trying to do so. However, sometimes, and this is more my personal opinion, sometimes we get locked into an idea and we can't shake it. And there's of course many, many scientists that are now looking for this dark matter, they're getting lots of grant money to do so, but there have been some recent discoveries that seem to indicate there may be more visible matter than we thought there were. We seem to have found that the space between the galaxies, which we thought was completely devoid of any matter, seems to have an enormous amount of visible matter. And some very smart scientists figured out that it was actually there by taking pictures of those regions and then making multiple copies and superimposing them on one another, maybe a thousand times, and then they found that, yes, there's a lot of visible matter there that normally under all circumstances is not visible, but with special techniques, with clever techniques, we begin to find that. And using some similar techniques to figure out what's out in the far regions of each of the galaxies, we find that perhaps there's way more visible matter there than we thought there was. And if that's the case, this may be sliding to the left and there may be more and more visible matter and less and less need for that invisible dark matter that may actually not even exist. Of course, at this point, many scientists, many astronomers, many astrophysicists would not agree with that. They would just say, no, it does exist. It's right there. We just got to find a way to find it. And perhaps some astrophysicists are looking into ways and figuring out that there's actually way more visible matter. And then the final question is, does dark matter actually exist? Is it there? Is it just a matter of finding these exotic unknown particles that don't seem to interact with electromagnetism? Or is it simply a matter of trying to figure out how to find all the visible matter that's out there? Which way will it be? That's the exciting part of science. And hopefully we'll find out one day and we will know. Well, one of the things they always say that is like, you know, you're dancing around, you twirl, there has to be something else there, otherwise. That is what we use for black holes and neutron stars. So we see something revolving around something that doesn't appear to be there. And then, yes, indeed, if we then study up on the velocities and the distance, we figure out there must be something there that's either a neutron star or a black hole. And so that's why those are difficult to, um, to discover. And there may be way more of them that account for some of that visible matter that is hard to see, but it's really known matter that fits on the periodic table instead of unknown matter that does not fit on the periodic table. So that's what it's all about.